What is up, everybody? Back with another discography ranking here today, and this time it's going to be Wasp, one of my all-time favorite bands, easily in the top 10. Um, they formed back in 1982 in Los Angeles, California. 15 albums that I'm going to be going through here today, their studio material, and of course, Blackie Lawless, the main man of the band, only constant member. Uh, you know, he's the vocalist, who I think he's got one of the best and most unique voices of all time. Um, on the first two albums, he played bass, and then he switched over to rhythm guitar after that. They've had a ton of different members in the band over the years, and this shirt actually, I got the Inside the Electric Circus Tour shirt. This one was printed in 1987, I think, and on the shirt, you got Johnny Rod, Blackie, Chris Holmes, and Steve Riley, who later went on to be in LA Guns. But uh, Wasp, as I said, one of my absolute favorite bands, so it was really tough to rank these. Been putting it off forever just because it's hard for me to finalize a list. But um, yeah, 15 albums, my opinion. Here we go. Coming in at the bottom is going to have to be KFD from 1997. Now with this one, it is by far their most different sounding album. They were trying to go for that industrial metal thing that uh, was kind of popular at the time. Marilyn Manson, Nine Inch Nails type shit. Um, it's not done terribly, just, um, you know, the production's not very good. It's a little too staticky. Um, the songs aren't really too memorable to me for the most part. You know, it's kind of a dark sounding album. I feel like I should like it more. Just I've tried and I've tried and I just can't really get super into it. There's a couple of Kind of decent songs on it though i think um wicked love's pretty cool and the horror the last two songs on the album definitely the standouts for me blackie lawless is still there sounding good on on the vocals which is cool um it is kind of notable also because it's the first album with mike duda on bass who is the current bass player right now and chris holmes came back for this one but uh, overall i do feel like it is their weakest my least favorite so it is here at number 15 kfd Next up at number 14, I'm going to go with their most recent album from 2015, Golgotha. I've got the CD right here, and I've also got it on vinyl, which I really do love this album cover. I think it looks super cool. It's a nice uh, gatefold. Got uh, some crosses and all that in there in the back. Now, of course, kind of Blackie Lawless, of course, is like a born-again Christian, I think, and there's some lyrical themes like that. That's not the reason I have it down low. I don't really give a shit about what the lyrics are. But uh, just the songs aren't super uh, memorable on this album to me. Again, I don't really go back to it that much. There are a few really good tracks on here, though. Scream, the opener's cool. Miss You is kind of a really uh, nice kind of dark ballad, which is cool. And Slaves of the New World Order is really good. But uh, yeah, Blackie on vocals, keyboards, rhythm guitar. You got Mike Duda on bass again, as I said. And a guy named Doug Blair, who's been their guitar player since 2000, mid-2000s. First album with him was Dominator in 2007. But uh, yeah, this is my number 14, Golgotha. Coming in at number 13 is Hell Dorado from 1999. Now with this one, they were trying pretty hard to go back to that 80s raunchy sound they had after attempting the industrial thing on the album previous to this. It's really evident with the song titles, you can just tell, you know, Don't Cry, Just Suck, Dirty Balls, stuff like that, which um, the sound of the album is pretty good. You got Chris Holmes, that great guitar tone on there, um, some good riffs, good solos throughout. Blackie Lawless is there on vocals, sounds amazing as usual. Some pretty good songs on here, you know, it's not a terrible album like some Wasp fans act like it is. I see it dead last of a lot of lists. Um, I definitely don't think it's the worst by any means, but um, some of the standout tracks, you got the title track. Um, probably Damnation Angels is a, one of the better ones on the album. Cocaine Cowboys and Hot Rods to Hell, the uh, best songs on it in my opinion. But yeah, overall, decent album. Not the best, not the worst. Hell Dorado, number 13. Yeah! Next up at number 12 is The Neon God Part 1, The Rise. So this one came out in 2004. It's the first part, obviously, of a two-part um, series of albums here that is a concept thing. Tells the story of a boy named Jesse who's like an abused orphan. He has powers to read and manipulate people. So kind of an interesting thing there with the lyrical themes. Um, it features Daryl Roberts on guitar. He was on three of their albums. The dude freaking left Wasp to join Five Finger Death Punch. What are you doing? But... This is a pretty cool album. Um, good guitar playing. Blackie, amazing on the vocals as usual. This one, kind of dark, you know, 
A lot of their slower songs are very haunting and sinister sounding, which is really cool. Not like cheesy ballad things, just very dark haunting stuff. Looking at these songs, some of the standouts, you know, you got Asylum number no. 9, which is one of their top 20 best songs of all time. And that's really saying something with a band that has 15 albums. I rank that one one of the top 20 best. Amazing song. The uh, vocals are awesome from Blackie. He's just a master coming up with uh, vocal harmonies and melodies and choruses. Just freaking mesmerizing epic stuff. XTC Riders, Raging Storm, some of the other standouts, but cool album here in Neon Guard Part 1, The Rise, number 12. The devil's begging to burn. Coming in at number 11 is Dominator from 2007. Now, this one was their first to feature current lead guitar player Doug Blair. Great player, a lot of good riffs and solos all over this album. Um, Blackie Lawless, of course, again, sounds amazing. Uh, nine songs on here. Mercy to open it up is really cool. The Burning Man, that is definitely the best song on this album, in my opinion. Again, one of their top 20 best. Just the way it's structured and flows is perfect. Uh, that opening guitar part is amazing. The guitar riffs and melodies all throughout the song are so amazing. Um, the Blackie Lawless, the way he like freaking forms his vocal parts are so good. Just the uh, vocal melodies and the verses are awesome. Then the bridge into the chorus, just all fantastic. And the solo in this song is amazing. Just super awesome. That song is pretty much perfect in my opinion. And Heaven's Hung in Black, another... Uh, Kind of, as I said before, Wasp is good at uh, those really kind of slower, dark-sounding songs. That is one of them that's really cool. But uh, yeah, good album here, Dominator. And it did just actually make my top 10 albums of 2007 list. So it's good enough to make that top 10 list, but it's not even a top 10 Wasp album. So that tells you how strong the Wasp discography is. The rest of these albums are really good. So uh, yeah, Dominator, number 11. <laughs> Coming in at number 10 is The Neon God Part 2, The Demise, the second part of that series of concept album there with Part 1 and Part 2, Neon God. I don't have like a physical copy of the album, but I do have a shirt that um, is based off the album. Never Say Die there is the opening song of Part 2, and it's a really cool song, really cool shirt there. I like the design on the front with Blackie standing there. And on the back, um, cool stuff as well. It says Come Back to Black, which... There's another really good song on the album. It's the final album with Daryl Roberts. Didn't say that yet. Who, as I said before, left the band to freaking join Five Finger Death Punch, which is pretty unfortunate. But uh, this is a good, consistent album. I think it's a bit better and stronger overall than part one. But uh, they're both good. Some other standouts on here. Resurrector's a cool song. Um, Tear Down the Walls, the final song on the album. The last, uh, Redemption, is cool. But yeah, good album. Um, Neon God Part 2, The Demise, number 10. Next up at number nine is Babylon from 2009. A really good album here. Dig it quite a bit. Part of me wants to rank it a little higher, but I think this is a pretty good spot for it. Uh, Babylon's Burning, that song is amazing. Definitely the standout track on here. Showcases yet again how much of a master songwriter and musician Blackie Lawless really is, just from the amazing guitar riffs and melodies to the fantastic vocal melodies and amazing catchy chorus in this song. Uh, there's a cool music video for it as well. Just start to finish, that's a great track. Uh, again, possibly one of their top 20 best of all time. Crazy to open it up. Another standout. Uh, there's a cool cover of Deep Purple's Burn on here that's done very well. Um, Into the Fire, kind of cool, like slower, dark one again. Uh, Seas of Fire, another good standout. The final track on here is a cover of an old Chuck Berry song called Promised Land. Um, that one's okay. Could have done without. But uh, yeah, top to bottom, pretty good. Um, Babylon, my number nine. <laughs> Coming in at number eight is Dying for the World from 2002. Another really good album with a pretty dark feel to it. I read that Blackie dedicated this one to everyone who died in 9-11, so that was pretty cool of him to do. Um, Shadow Man to open it up is great. Uh, Hallowed Ground, that one's kind of the main like tribute song to the 9-11 victims, which is an amazing song. Got a nice buildup, very dark, eerie feel to it. Um, the vocal melodies and chorus is amazing. Then an amazing guitar solo from uh, Daryl Roberts, which is the first album to feature him, and then he was on the next two as well. Uh, Trail of Tears is amazing, Rubber Man, some of the other standouts, but again, really awesome, solid album here. Hate to rank it so low at number eight, but 
rest of these, at least 8.5s out of 10, I'd give them. So Dying for the World, number eight. Next up at number seven is Unholy Terror from 2001. Now this one has a pretty similar feel, I think, to the previous album I just talked about, Dying for the World. Do like this one a little bit better. Uh, it's very close. This one features Chris Holmes on lead guitar, the last album with him. Frankie Benali does half of the drum tracks, and the other half are done by a guy named Stet Howland. Uh, Mike Duda on the bass, as I said before, he's been on every album since uh, KFD in 97. But uh, yeah, a lot of good stuff on here. Let It Roar to open it up is really cool. Hate to Love Me has a really awesome heavy riff. Locomotive Man, probably my favorite song on the album, just start to finish, amazing stuff. And uh, Wasted White Boys, the final song on here, got kind of that like 80s party hard rock feel to it. But uh, yeah, really good album here, Unholy Terror, number seven. Coming in at number six is The Crimson Idol from 1992. Really good concept album here, and I do actually see this one at the very top of a lot of lists. That's cool, just not quite up there for me. I still do love it a lot, though. Um, a lot of awesome songs on here. The Invisible Boy is great. Arena of Pleasure, which uh, Doug Aldrich does the lead guitar on that song. Scorching guitar solo. He's uncredited, but yeah, Bob Kulik does most of the lead guitar, of course. Uh, Blackie Lawless does some guitar as well. Keyboards, bass. The vocals are amazing from Blackie, as usual. Uh, Chainsaw Charlie is another great song on here. Um, the Great Misconceptions of Me, some of the standouts uh, in my opinion. But of course, there's Seth Holland and Frankie Minnelli again, each doing some drums. But top to bottom, this is a very cool, good, consistent album. The Crimson Idol, number six. Next up at number five is The Headless Children from 1989. Uh, Johnny Rod on bass here. The last album with Chris Holmes for a while on lead guitar. Blackie Lawless, again, sounding amazing. Um, and it's actually got Frankie Minnelli on the drums here. Uh, the Heretic, Lost Child to Open It Up, is possibly not, probably not their best opener, but one of their best openers for sure. Just an amazing song. Um, title track is cool. Mean Man has an amazing riff. Super heavy song. Uh, Rebel in the FDG is amazing. Man Eater, some of the standouts on here, but... Really, really good album. Uh, yeah, so that is my number five, The Headless Children. Next up at number four is Still Not Black Enough from 1995. I think this one is super underrated, uh, pretty unfairly hated on in my opinion. Some Wasp fans shit talk it, but... This is a great album, a lot of cool songs on here. Originally, this was supposed to be a Blackie Lawless solo album, but it's got a lot of the usual suspects that have played on a lot of different Wasp stuff. Stead Howland and Frankie Benali both do some uh, drumming on it. Bob Kulik does some guitar. Blackie does a lot of stuff, of course, produces the album, keyboards, uh, some bass, guitar, everything he does. His vocals sound amazing. The title track on here, one of their best of all time. Just amazing song. The chorus is awesome. The vocal melodies, his voice just is amazing, as I said, multiple times. Um, looking at the rest of this stuff, Black Forever is awesome, Scared to Death, Goodbye America. There's a couple different versions of this album that came out. My CD version does not have the song Skinwalker on it, but there's another version that does have a song called Skinwalker, which is amazing as well. Uh, but uh, yeah, top to bottom, Rock and Roll to Death is great as well. Uh, this is just a really cool album that if you just missed it, go back and check it out because it's great. It's still not black enough. Number four. I'm a wild child. Come and love me. I want you. Next up at number three is The Last Command from 1985. Killer freaking album here. You got Chris Holmes and Randy Piper on guitar. Great duo. This was their last with Randy. Um, Steve Riley right there. The first album with him on the drums. He later went on to be in LA Guns. And uh, Blackie Lawless, the freaking man right there. Sounding amazing on vocals and bass per usual. Looking at this track listing, a lot of great stuff. It opens up with Wild Child, which is their best song in my opinion. One of my top 10 favorite songs ever by anybody. So... Just freaking love that from start to finish. It's a perfect song. The intro is amazing. Vocal melodies from Blackie, fantastic. The chorus is amazing and very catchy. The guitar solo is amazing. So really, start to finish, perfect song. 
Um, a lot of good underrated stuff on here as well. Ball Crusher, Fistful of Diamonds, Jack Action, Widowmaker, all amazing. Blind in Texas, one of the bigger songs on the album as well as Wild Child. Both had music videos, both awesome. Um, the title track is great, Running Wild in the Streets, Sex Drive, Cries in the Night. Really, all these songs are awesome. And there was a really good song too that was added later. It was a bonus track called Savage. Not on this original version that I have, but uh, that's a great song as well. And also, real quick, I'll pull this out because there's uh, some cool art there with the guys freaking beheaded. Looks super cool. But uh, yeah, great album here, The Last Command, number three. I'm on Coming in at number two is Inside the Electric Circus from 1986. Amazing album here. Um, it is really close between this one and The Last Command, but I do think this one just does edge it out for me. Uh, looking at these songs, a lot of awesome stuff. The title track is amazing. 95 Nasty, which I do actually have the single version of. Super cool to have. Um, the lineup of the band on this album, again, you got freaking the shirt here is from this tour. Uh, Johnny Rod, Blackie Lawless, Chris Holmes, and Steve Riley right there. Um, Restless Gypsy. One of their top five best songs. Amazing. Start to finish. Super catchy. The chorus is freaking fantastic and mesmerizing. Uh, Shoot from the Hip, a super cool underrated song on here. Very awesome riff. I'm Alive is great. Uh, Sweet Cheetah, Mantronic. King of Sodom and Gomorrah. And uh, the last song on here, The Rock Rolls On. Really, start to finish. Love this album. Killer freaking stuff. Inside the Electric Circus, number two. <laughs> And taking the number one spot is the 1984 self-titled debut. Amazing album right here. Freaking masterpiece. One of the best debuts of all time. Their only album to feature Tony Richards on the drums. It has that great classic guitar duo of Chris Holmes and uh, Randy Piper. Their tone is amazing. The riffs and solos all over the album are fantastic. And the man, Blackie freaking Lawless right there. Um, his voice sounds amazing. As I've said like 15 times already, he plays bass on this as well. Looking at these songs, side one, we got I Want to Be Somebody to open it up, which is fantastic. Love Machine, great song. Um, the Flame, B.A.D., School Days. And then side two, which I do actually like a bit more, um, Hellion to start that off, which is one of their probably top 10 best songs ever. Sleeping in the Fire is fantastic. On Your Knees, amazing. Uh, Tormentor and The Torch Never Stops to End It, which is my favorite song on this album. Just killer stuff. And uh, the song Animal Fuck Like a Beast was not on the original version of this. It was their debut single, but it was dropped before the album came out because some people thought it might be too controversial and they didn't want to get the album like banned by some stores or something. So it was later on the uh, reissue in like 98, I believe. But regardless, without that song, either way, this song or this album is freaking amazing. My number one Wasp album, 1984, self-titled debut. And that does wrap up the list um, as usual. Uh, I'd like to know what y'all thought. That was a freaking tough one to do. One of my favorite bands, 15 freaking albums. So... Leave me your lists in the comments, and until next time, thank you for watching.